Yeah, first of all, I want to say that uh, everything that Rodmila described um, is very similar to what we do, like how we built the courses, um, how we first analyze the situation, do positioning for the courses, what kind of similar courses are there already on edX, on other platforms, where can we find our niche to position our MOOC. Um, the story of the University of Bayreuth and the MOOC sector is that we launched the project in 2019. Um, and there was another head of department before me. And for a, a year and a half, um, yeah, the, the project ran rather slow and there weren't any MOOCs published. Um, and then I joined the project in uh, November in 2020, last year. <laughs> and um, now we have managed to publish two MOOCs um, and we are working on the third run right now. Um, the main goal um, for us is to promote the university, to attract high qualified students, students from foreign countries and also of course to contribute to the reputation of the university, to show that we are a rather small university but still we have, and I will come to that a little bit later, uh, we have some very interesting key um, academic areas that we want to promote to the world because it's really worth it. Um, See, so this is our team. And uh, there's me, the instructional director, head of the department. We have Dr. Anja Hage, who's our instructional designer. She um, does all the concept, like building the courses on edX, um, making sure that the didactic concept is intact, that we provide a very like varied exercises, have changes in media, etc., and make it really interesting for our participants. We have Nikola Dronikov um, from Moldova as marketing manager, who's doing a great job also do, um, assisting me with the positioning, coming up with a marketing package for each MOOC, which we try to make uh, the same for every professional, like offering the same marketing uh, services to everyone um, to make it fair. <laughs> um, um, and we don't have much budget, but we also do uh, some kind of uh, paid ads as well. But a lot is uh, using the network of the professors um, talking to our alumni, um, going through social media and spreading the work with, on a low budget, let, so to speak. Uh, and then we have Teo Reno, of course, a very important person in our team, head of our media production, who's supervising the whole media production concept, like designing the studio, um, organizing the shootings, etc. Uh, this is the four, like the core team of the MOOC project. And then we have six um, very capable student assistants who are assisting us in research and media production, most of all, and testing as well. Um, three uh, student assistants, for example, are only there to assist Teo with the media production because this is the heaviest part, having all the video shootings, the podcasts made, etc. Uh, the post-production with animations, with, which is a lot of work, of course. Um, and of course, we have a professor that's working with us and who um, is allowed to employ one or two assistants from his chair, from his area of studies to also assist the project, who can support us to understand the topic, to dive into the field, um, and to understand what the MOOC is really about, who uh, they are assisting us with creating the text and everything. Um, so these are the academic areas that I wanted to point out to you, just so you uh, yeah, um, uh, understand a little better, like the profile that we are going for at the University of Bayreuth. We have um, a huge department in the field of new materials, biofabrication, biomaterials, also additive manufacturing. We're working together with the Fraunhofer Institute. Um, and um, there are many chairs in that area at the University of Bayreuth, and it's also close to becoming a cluster of excellence. So the second MOOC that we launched was in the field of biofabrication. And it's also the one that we want, the department that we want to take further. That's why I asked about uh, the MicroMasters program, because this is where we want to go with this, like having more MOOCs produced in that field and having, for example, five MOOCs in the field of new materials. Um, but this is 
still in the future. <laughs> we only have one and let's see how it goes in the future. Then we have an elite um, studies program in the field of scientific computing that we want to promote. We have a unique studies program in philosophy and economics, still a combination that's very rare, that doesn't exist like that anywhere else in the world, as far as I know. Um, and um, we have history and economics. That's the third book we are working on right now. Um, also a very interesting combination of studies. Um, we have a cluster of excellence actually in the field of African studies. African studies have become very big and vibrant over the last 10 years. They're doing a lot of research, very varied research in that area. Um, and um, we're actually building an, an own institute for that on our campus as we speak. <laughs> Um, then there is the field of computer game studies, um, a, de a department that we're working very closely with. Um, people who yeah, have this great combination of design and uh, dramaturgy and also programming skills, being able to do storytelling and also having yeah, the technical view you can actually program and build a story online. Um, and then we have media culture and media economy, also a topic that we want to dive into with the MOOC in the future. Um, food quality and safety. Um, we have a seventh faculty at the University of Bayreuth. Uh, I think it's been one and a half year now um, that focuses on nutrition law, food quality and safety. Um, very interdisciplinary approach with seven chairs. And our fourth MOOC will be in cooperation with them. There's one professor who is mainly responsible for the MOOC, and then we have six other professors who are contributing to the MOOC. Yeah, so far. This is how we work right now. As you, as you saw, we don't have that many people. <laughs> so it always takes uh, quite a long time to finish one MOOC. For example, the course setup or like the first conversations that I have with a professor um, take place in January until we have a didactic design until the assistants are employed and then when it finally comes to media production etc etc um, it can be it can take six to eight months until we're actually ready to publish the MOOC um, so it's a very long process <laughs> um, and we are working to uh, on optimizing it like for example right now what we do um, the production cycles are overlapping, for example, if we are in pre-production or if we are in production already with one MOOC, we already start with the next one, doing the concept, doing the pre-production to, to make it possible to publish three, every three or four months. So, uh, but this is all we can do with that amount of people in the team right now. Um, here are some impressions from the behind the scenes. A great advantage that we have here is we have a very professional studio at the University of Bayreuth, which belongs to the media department. Um, you can see that in the low right corner uh, is a shot of the whole studio. Uh, and also, um, uh, let me see, upper right is also made in the studio and uh, lower left. Um, we, ha we have a lot of equipment there, um, requisite everything um, to set up a different setting for each MOOC. And we also have a, a little budget <laughs> for that to always um, yeah, build something new, make, make it look like you always see this is a Bayreuth MOOC because the setting is always similar where the professor act, but it's of course, we always build it a little differently for each MOOC to represent uh, the area of studies, of course. Um, and um, another advantage is we have a very beautiful cam uh, campus. <laughs> we always say it's the most beautiful in Germany. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually true, but we sure feel that way. Uh, we have a very beautiful campus that also offers a lot of attract attractive locations to do shootings. Um, you can see that those are recurrent pictures that everyone had to be there with masks. <laughs> Unfortunately, we all know the situation. Um, but we were able um, to film a lot of things in the studio because we have the big space and we can actually make it work to be there with four people on distance <laughs> and do the shootings anyway. 
Um, yeah, I just pasted a few numbers here. Those are actually numbers from 2019 because I wasn't able to find anything from 2021, <laughs> unfortunately, um, in that time. But we can see that um, the yeah the amount of people who are already graduated and who are doing MOOCs besides their job is quite big. For example, the one of the main goals that we have at the university is, of course, to to promote like our university in general on an international platform, but also to um, attract them to our international master's programs. But the thing is that when people already have a master's degree, uh, they are not interested in studying a master's program in Bayreuth. Um, so this is where we have, this is one of our challenges, like how to adapt our strategy, um, actually see what kind of people are actually taking our MOOCs because on average, they are already 29 years old and already finished their studies. It may also be, um, a problem of edX because the people on edX are older than on other uh, platforms in comparison. Um, and um, as Nikolai mentioned in the beginning, um, there is not much activity in Germany when it comes to MOOCs. Like we have a fast growing audience, people are actually using it, but people in Germany offering MOOCs um, it doesn't uh, often happen a lot. <laughs> uh, we have the Open RPE, um, for example. They are very productive. They have, I think, over 70 MOOCs um, by now uh, and very, very topics on a very high level. And we have a handful of universities in Bayreuth who are actually doing MOOCs. Two of them, the LMU and TU in Munich, <laughs> one of our most important universities in Germany. And then there's us <laughs> and Aachen and let me think, I think Hamburg started as well, but it's not many who do it. And we were also asked by edX if we could offer something in German because they see the high increase of German participants on their platform, but 99% of the content is still in English and then comes Spanish. <laughs> and um, so we are actually thinking about that producing in German as well. Um, what we want to do in the future, we want to integrate our MOOCs more into the campus life as well, because right now we are producing for people outside of the university. Um, and um, it would be nice <laughs> because it's also a huge value for the professors um, to have MOOCs that actually uh, can be implemented better into the lectures um, on campus as well. Um, also, we want to offer the service um, to give vouchers to our students, um, not only on edX, but also for Coursera, for Udacity, for all the big platforms they are, and uh, give them the opportunity to also use, uh, get certificates for free as a special service of our university, like to establish the um, relationships with the platforms and then um, offer the vouchers to our students. Uh, another thing that we want to look into in the future are COIL formats, like having more international cooperations with other universities, because right now um, our professors pretty much do these moves on their own. We always have expert interviews from people from other universities cooperate on a smaller level. Um, but having a MOOC or a formal re co created. Um, and we didn't did that didn't do this so far and this is really something we want to explore in the future and the sustainability is a big issue right now because the situation is that most of us in the team are working on temporary contracts we are we oh it's always uh, uh yeah um, a time frame of two years maximum three years we work on project money, so we are supported by uh, the Bavarian government, but it's only for a certain amount of time. And then we have to see how we get our funding again. So something that I want to get into um, is to, I'm sorry, <coughs> uh, is to become more sustainable uh, in the financial aspect, because this is something that really slows us down to always know a person is there for a certain time and then, then you have to find someone else and start all over again. Um, this is a big issue we have right now. Um, 
So this is it for my presentation. Um, as Red Miller also said, you're very welcome to keep in touch to give the uh, yeah uh, exchange further. Um, I made some notes. Uh, I will stop my screen right now, but um, I'll see that I um, make some additions because I wanted to make clear that on the plus side, we have a great working pro, uh, project management. For example, we work with Kanban boards and um, we have a very lean, agile way of managing our project, which works uh, really well. Um, I think we have high aspirations um, regarding the quality we want to deliver. I see also on edX, which is supposed to be the greatest um, MOOC platform there is, but um, I see that many MOOCs are really just uh, professors talking and showing their slides and there's nothing special about it. Um, but um, I hope you got the impression that what we are trying to do with our professional um, shootings in the studio, um, that we have other aspirations than that. Uh, and that we are always trying to include expert interviews, gamification elements as well, um, varied exercises and quizzes to make it really interesting for our learners. Um, uh, as Red Miller pointed out, um, yeah, very rightly, I can only agree to that, that we want to contribute to the sense of free education. We believe that everyone in the world, uh, non regardless of their of their financial background, um, they should be, yeah, they should have access to high quality uh, education, and it's a really good feeling to contribute to that. Um, uh, and also on the plus side, we we have a long waiting list of professors who want to do a MOOC with us. Actually, the waiting list is getting a little too long right now. That's why I would love to have more people <laughs> to be able to produce more in a shorter time. Um, um, let's see how it develops. On the minus or the yeah, most important challenges also are that um, for example, everything that makes a MOOC really interesting, like um, discussions, like uh, forums where people can exchange ideas, you always need someone who moderates that forum. Um, and everything that adds to the workload um, is hard to implement for us because we don't have that many people to take care of that. Um, and um, yeah, this is something we'd really like to improve. And also something I want to, I um, want to point out that uh, edX is really hard to manage in the back end and it's hard to build the courses um, and the support, the edX support that we are supposed to get is not always that supportive actually. Um, but I heard that it's the same with Future Learn and any other platform. Um, is, yeah, you need people with great technical skills to actually build the courses as you want them. And for example, we are using H5P a lot um, for interactive um, exercises and quizzes and take this H5P content and implement it in edX because it's so much easier to build it there than in edX itself. Um, anything else? Um, Micromasters of better one. Yeah, uh, something I wanted to, to add to what Rod Miller said also that working with the professor is really interesting because the professor are so different. Uh, like everyone you're working with, like there are people who really surprise you uh, in a positive way, like you think, oh, it's a very shy person. Let's see how this goes. And then they go in front of the camera and it just pops and it works. Uh, and that's great. And then you have people who are thinking, of course, I do that, no problem. And then they stand in front of the camera and it's really hard to get good content. And um, the way the people work in different um, areas of studies is really interesting and also very enriching for oneself to be able to, um, to create the MOOC, to learn from it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. So uh, thank you very much, Sandy. Um, I have a small suggestion because Radmila showed us um, some insights on Prometheus. I've just opened on edX your value co-creation in sport management because maybe we can just uh, look at the trailer if you aren't against it so I could share it.
If you agree, uh, could we use the biofabrication trailer? That's sure. More recent and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll just uh, look at that one. Just sharing. Just make it bigger. What is biofabrication? Why is spider silk so precious? And what can you do with expert knowledge in the field? Biofabrication is an engineering discipline at the close border to biology. So what do we do? We simultaneously process materials and cells in order to regenerate, for instance, tissue, like skin. We make skin replacements. And for that, we need some examples from nature. Spiders provide us with exciting materials that can be used together with cells in order to get new tissue. The University of Bayreuth is offering the first biofabrication MOOC on edX. Biomaterials and biofabrication. <laughs> Design, engineering and innovation. Stemming from our corresponding master program. My name is Professor Thomas Scheibel. I'm the head of Department of Biomaterials and I'm the study program coordinator of the master study program Biofabrication. This MOOC leads you through a storyline of six interactive episodes where you follow Emma and Paul, our fictional characters as they explore the world of biomedical engineering. What we created is a mini series of videos with actors where we transport our ideas of biofabrication to a broader audience. We start by presenting different types of biomaterials, followed by defining hydrogels as a preparation for industrial and medical use. With that knowledge, we then dive into additive manufacturing, tissue engineering and bioreactors. This gives you all the ingredients you need to print an organ. But how do you do that? Of course you will get an answer to that question and also learn how to test your three-dimensional bio product. In the last episode, we addressed the future of biofabrication, its potentials and possible bioethical implications. You will learn from international field experts who present highly engaging, application-oriented content that will sharpen your theoretical and practical skills. You will get key insights into the research at the University of Bayreuth and the excellent equipment that is available. So, are you curious about technology and innovation in the medical sector? Then enroll now in the MOOC Biomaterials and Biofabrication – Design, Engineering and Innovation offered by the University of Bayreuth.